Forever changing us
Shabbat Shalom, good Shabbos, it's good to see all of you here. Gemma, happy birthday today. Happy Have a great day. Glad you came, even on your birthday, so God bless you. Yeah, 
All right, so anyway, it's great to see those of you who are here. I know it's been a very busy week. Uh, you know, this time of the year, we have the most number of services, especially with Yom Kippur. But, uh, but anyway, they were good services, and thanks to everybody who's been serving and coming. And also, we welcome our live stream audience, and God bless you at home or wherever you are watching. We look forward to having a wonderful time together today. So we're going to begin with our Torah service, and then we'll have our what we're calling our Shabbat celebration service afterwards. So let me pray, and let's commit this time to the Lord. Avina Shabbat Shemayim, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for each person who's here. I just pray your special blessings upon them. I pray, God, that you refresh people, uh, especially those who've been serving this week. And Lord, for those who are watching that are sick, Lord, please put your healing hand on them today and heal them, help them to feel better. And, uh, and we pray, God, for those who are away, watch over and protect them while they're traveling, bring them back safely. And we, we join with many others around the world praying for the peace of Yerushalayim. Uh, and uh, we also pray for your peace upon the United States. We certainly need it here too, God, and in Afghanistan and various places around the world. And we pray for every person around the world who's not a believer in Yeshua. Lord, we pray that they would turn to him today. We pray you'd reveal yourself to them today and they would, they would get saved. So again, Lord, thank you. Uh, thank you for this time. And we just pray hedge of protection around, uh, the, as we already prayed earlier, we just pray hedge of protection around us all and just pray that technologically everything will work properly. Bless everybody who's serving in any capacity, that, uh, that everything would go uh, smoothly uh, for, for everybody's service. Uh, uh, bless Andrews. He's going to lead us in the singing worship. Uh, uh, bless myself as I'm having to fill in on the liturgy today. Uh, we pray for, um, uh, pray for Cyril, who's going to be speaking a little bit later in the service, and, and, uh, and also Elijah, who'll be sharing the drosh today. So, Lord, just pray you bless all of these things, and, and uh, just get those who are on their way here safely, uh, and uh, bless them, and, uh, and just, just pray, God, that uh, uh, you be glorified. And we pray this in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. All right. Well, you know, both our cantors are away today, so I'm coming off the bench. I'm third string, so I'll be filling in on the liturgy. All right. But anyway, if you'll please stand as we're going to begin our Torah service. So when I start chanting, you'll go ahead and pull the Torah scroll out. You'll undress it and put it on that table. That microphone. Use the other one. Okay. Okay. Go, go ahead and open it. Is open it up. Make sure it is open. There we go. And pull it out. So we're removing the Torah scroll. And as we do that, we say, "Then it came about when the ark set out that Moses said." Rise up, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. For the Torah will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who gave the Torah to his people Israel in his holiness. Now, you're going to need to undress that, so you have to pull all the stuff off. Vayahi ben so aha aron, vayomer Moshe. Kuma Adonai veya futsu oi vecha veya nusu mesanecha mi panecha ki mitzion te tse tora ki mitzion te tse tora udavar Adonai me Yerushalayim, Baruch Shenatan, Torah, Torah, Baruch 
ברוך שנתן תורה תורה לעמו ישראל בקדושתו. Thank you. That looks good. Thank you. You, you guys can go ahead and have a seat. And we'll have you come back up. They did a good job today. Yay. Praise the Lord. All right, you may be seated for a moment. Okay. Well, we're not worshiping the... Hold on, let me use this one. Well, we're, as I've said many times, we're not worshiping the Torah scroll when we bring it out. Uh, we're honoring God and his word, uh, who gave us his word. All right, this week's parsha is Ha'azinu. So Ha'azinu, give ear. Okay, that's in Devarim or Deuteronomy 32, verses 1 through 52. Ya'amot Eliyahu ben Moshe. So Elijah's going to come up and and do the blessing before the Torah. Do you need that here? Or you, or you got it memorized? Or? Right, let, me get, let me get it for you here. Nice to have it in the, the background. <laughs> That's fine. There you go. Please stand to uh, bless the Lord for the Torah. Barehu et Adonai Hamvorach Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vae Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Wait, excuse me. <laughs> Baruch Oh yes, this is, this is um, Baruch Adonai Hamvorach yeah, let's, let's just start over. Why? Let's bless the Lord twice. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So let's uh, let's bless the Lord. <laughs> so it's Baruch Hu. And there are two different tunes. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach le'olam va'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam. Asher b'achar banu mikol ha'amim. V'natan lanu et torato. Baruch Ata Adonai. No tain ha Torah. Amen. Bless the Lord who is to be blessed. Blessed be the Lord who is to be blessed forever and ever. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all peoples and gave us your Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Ben Herzl? <laughs> Ya'amod Michael ben Herzl. Yes. Please come up, Pastor. You may be seated, if you can. Okay. All right, praise the Lord. Thank you, Elijah. I think the bar who's his favorite piece of liturgy. So anyway, that's okay. All right, Lord willing, I'm going to chant for us Devarim, or Deuteronomy 32, verses 1 through 4, which is the first four verses of this week's parasha. You know, there's only 34 chapters in Devarim, so we're getting pretty close. That's about Semchat Torah time. So, all right, so let me, let me do this, verses 1 through 4. Ha'azinu ha'shamayim ba'adabera v'tishma ha'aretz imrefi ya'arov kamatar lichi tizal katal imrati kisirim ale deshe v'chirch Vivim ale eshev ki shem Yahweh ekra havu godel leloheinu hatzur tamim paolo ki choder rachav mishpat. El emuna ve'en azel tzadik 
Vayashar Hu. Okay, and the English of that was Ha'azinu, give ear, O heavens, and let me speak. This is Moshe speaking. And, uh, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as the droplets on the fresh grass and as the showers on the herb. For I proclaim in the name of Yahweh, ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, where is that? Oh, or, did I already call you up? I turn me. Yeah, I'm on Eliyahu ben Moshe. So Elijah's going to come up and share a drosh with us. Uh, I think, wait a minute, did I do that wrong? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think we, we, uh, oh, we're going to put, put this up first. Okay, hold on. That's right. Everybody stand, he's going to do the blessing after the Torah. I just uh, look at it so I can get the tune again. I really am much more used to doing the, the Baruch Hu before the main service. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolan Ba'ed. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher v'achar b'ani miko ha'amim Oh, that's the wrong one. I'm doing that, the one before the Torah. Oops. One more time. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu Torah emet V'chayei olam neta betachenu Baruch atah Adonai Noten ha-Torah Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and planted everlasting life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. And now, you, you may be seated. And now I will also be giving the drash for the day. Deuteronomy 32, one through four. <clears throat> Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass, and like showers upon the herb. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Amen. Uh, I start that way because I, I've learned that it's a, it's a tradition, but especially with this parasha, that you want to start and you want to end with something positive and beautiful. And I mean, on, that's, that's what we're given immediately is uh, Mos Moshe and Moses blessing the Lord and with such beautiful words declaring his greatness. Um, and I think that's important because uh, we're, we're in the time of the high holy days when we are reflecting on um, our sin, but also God's incredible mercy. And so I, we, I kind of want to sandwich this because there's going to be a lot of moments of God's mercy and uh, just the, the, the beauty of who God is and with a little bit of us in the middle of being sinful and, and broken, and then at the end, God's mercy again. But I also want to give a little bit of a, a little bit of a story, and that is, um, I don't know, does anybody here have any friends who rock climb? 
I don't know, maybe that's, a, maybe that's just my friends, but I, I have a lot of friends who rock climb, and I've, I've tried a little bit with them, but it's really hard. Um, and I, 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 I tell you, I, I tried it, and I get the appeal. It really is beautiful for two reasons. Like one, when you're on the face of the rock, and you get a really intense rush of adrenaline, because it's objectively scary. People do hurt themselves. But also when you get to the top, it's called sending it. When you, when, you, when, you, when you do a full send, when you get to the top of the rock, it's an even greater rush of adrenaline. Because first of all, you accomplish something. Wow. Yeah. You accomplish something that's frankly hard and that most people can't do. But also when you get to the top, you can see just a, a, a new and very beautiful perspective when you get to the top of the rock. But like I tell you, I mean, it's... It is hard and it is scary, and I, I do know that they that they have hurt themselves uh, a couple times. Sprained ankles, thankfully, is is all at this point. But the climbing of of the rock is something that brings a new perspective of the beauty of the world and and a really a really intense sense of of joy, even though it's it's hard. And I bring that up because. The central metaphor, the central like praise that is given to God in this passage and in the Haftarah passage is that he is a rock. And that that means that he um, not just is something that we can look to for strength, but it's something that we can stand on and be protected. It's, it's interesting, in the same passage where he's described as a rock, it's described as he gives our feet kind of agility so that we're like a deer. Which is interesting because like, we kind of think of, I mean, as humans, we trip over rocks. But they're in their idea, which is, which is true, the rock is something you can stand on and be strong, and the deer is an animal that can be standing and strong even if it is in the quirkiest of positions because the deer is fleet-footed. So God gives our feet strength and, and mobility. But remember last week, uh, I, I talked about how this passage was coming next. Um, this, is the, this is the song of witness that Moses sang, uh, in some ways, uh, against Israel. It was a song that they were supposed to sing and remember and know that when they were going to sin, because remember, there was a kind of a, a doom that was proclaimed against them, that even though they did have the option, righteousness was set before them. Um, Moses knew and God knew that they were going to fall. And this song was a song of witness against them. And it's also interesting because, I mean, this is just for any, any aspiring worship leaders here. I think we need some more songs of witness. I think we need some more songs that don't just glorify the Lord. And we, as, as what I just read, this song does glorify the Lord and does recognize his beauty. But uh, hey, maybe, maybe consider writing more songs that, that will remind the fellowship and remind the church and remind the Messianic community that we need to, we need to wake up and we need to act. Um, but yeah, so the beginning of this story is the story of God's glory. And then immediately after we get into that, that difficult witness. The first verse that isn't praising God is Deuteronomy 32.5. He says, they have dealt corruptly with him. They are no longer his children because they are blemished. They are a crooked and twisted generation. And that's because not just the recurring theme of the Torah is that when you betray God's law and when you, A, you can, you can kind of divide it into two camps, when you commit idolatry, when you worship other things that are not God, or when you oppress the people that are made in God's image, you are committing adultery, and you are, you are, you are committing the, the worst kind of betrayal. I mean, uh, committing adultery against your spouse is arguably the worst kind of betrayal that one can commit on earth, but committing against our great God, it's, it's infinitely, has an infinite more magnitude. But this first thing is, they are a crooked and twisted generation. They have dealt it corruptly. They have, they have committed this betrayal. But an awesome thing about this passage is that it goes back and forth. It continues with that, that sandwich idea that, that I was saying a little bit earlier. 
This is pretty, pretty soon after Deuteronomy 32, 9 through 13. But the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob has allotted heritage. He found him in a desert land and the howling waste of the wilderness. He encircled him. He cared for him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Like an eagle, it stirs up its nest that flutters over the young, spreading out its wings, catching them, bearing them on his pinions. The Lord alone guided him. No foreign god was with him. He made him ride on the high places of the land, and he ate the produce of the field. And he suckled him with the honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. And do you see, see the great, oh man, I, and I've forgotten the word again, but like, I guess just a juxtaposition, that, that was the word that, that someone helped me out with uh, on Thursday. Um, the great juxtapos juxtaposition between the experience of physical desert that the Lord helped them out of and was with them. And when they were in the physical desert, they flew on wings like eagles. But the warning is that they could be in this great holy land and they could experience a spiritual desert. And that's, and that's what the great witness is, is that when you're in a place of physical promise, beware because it could be in a spiritual desert. And you get the second juxtaposition, which is this great and mighty rock that people can be, can be given strength by and people can be broken against. It said that he, he nursed them out of this rock with honey. The rock gave them honey. And we saw that literally rock, a rock, two rocks actually, gave the people of Israel water during their travels. So God wants his people to know that he is a strong rock that can be their refuge, but he is soft and gentle to them, and, and he wants a relationship of, of love and of, of worship and of protection. And that's, that's the promise. But unfortunately, when Israel will betray them, and, and, and in, in our experience, like consistently, we do violate God's law, and we do break his commandments, and we do grieve the Holy Spirit, and it's, 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 it's very sad. Um, but when that happens, so what God tells the people of Israel in this song is that, I would have said, I will cut them to pieces. I will wipe them from human memory. Had I not feared provocation by the enemy, lest their adversaries should misunderstand, lest they should say, our hand is triumphant. It was not the Lord who did all of this. For they are a nation void of counsel, and there is no understanding in them. If they were wise, they would understand this. They would discern the latter end. How could one have chased a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight unless their rock had sold them? And the Lord had given them up. For their rock is not as our rock. Our enemies are by themselves. So there are two things that this passage, I think, make very clear to us. And that is that when God acts, he's trying to display himself. And when God punishes, he's trying to display himself. God's not going to punish if the message is not going to be received. And this message, message isn't just for his people, but it's for the lands around them. He wants them to know as well that their rocks are not the real rocks. So we see all the way back here that God's plan is to reveal himself as the rock that makes all stand and makes all fall to the entire world, to all the nations. Because when God allows allows punishments, as he, he promises that he will in this, in this song, he does it for our good that we can know that he is the rock that we need to lean on. Now the, uh, the Haftarah passage is more of a song of, of direct praise, and I, I do want to bring that up as, as we kind of conclude. This is 2 Samuel 22, 32-33. David says, For who is God but the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? This God is my strong refuge and has made my way blameless. And verses 15, 51. For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations and sing praises to your name. Great salvation he brings to his king and shows steadfast love to his anointed, to David and his offspring forever. And this is near the end of 2 Samuel when, when David, when we've seen and we've walked with David, through so many highs and so many lows, and so many moments of great faithfulness on his part, and so, much, so many acts of, of adultery against God and against his fellow people. And we see that at the end of his, his life, this is the psalm 
This is the song that he sings, that God has been with him and God has brought him salvation. And this is so clearly juxtaposed again with the end of Deuteronomy, where we see the end of Moses' life. God says that that very day, the Lord spoke to Moses, go up this, go up this mountain of the Abarim, Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, opposite Jericho, and view the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the people of Israel for a possession, and die on the mountain which you go up, and be gathered to your people as Aaron your brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered to his people, because you broke faith with me in the midst of the people of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, and because you did not treat me as holy in the midst of the people of Israel. For you shall go and see the land before you, but you shall not go there into the land that I am giving to the people of Israel. Deuteronomy 32, 42, 48 to 52. And that's a, that's a, it is a hard passage where we, where we see a little bit of both. We see that Moses, he, he received a, a punishment, that he was not able to go into the land and experience the fruits. But throughout Deuteronomy, we, we know that Moses' heart was that he wanted to see God's faithfulness enacted. So from, from, my, from my vantage, allowing Moses to climb to the top of this great mountain, this great rock, and stand there one last time and see the glories of the Lord, and for this to be a message to all the people that God is going to be faithful, but God is going to, God is going to discipline his children, that this final message was a great act of, of mercy to Moses and to all the people to push them in the right direction right before he took Moses uh, to be with him. So God's punishments are always for his children and therefore our good and therefore the good of our neighbor. Uh, thank you. Praise the Lord. If you'll please stand. So we're, so we're going to put it back in the ark. Eitz chayim hi lemachazikim ba betoche ha meushar derache ha darche noam Vechol nativo te ha shalom ha shivenu adonai elecha venashuva chadesh chadesh amenu. Chadesh amenu kekedem. It is a tree of life for those who hold it fast, and those who support it are to be praised. All of its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are filled with peace. Cause us to return, O Adonai, and we shall return to you, O Lord. Bring us back. Bring us back to you, Lord. Bring us back through you, O Lord, as days of old. Amen. Thank you, God. Please remain standing for the Amidah. So this week, we're going to do the, uh, I'm going to put this down. So this week, uh, we're doing the uh, third portion of the uh, Amidah, the third of the seven that are, are done in synagogues traditionally. We usually just do one of them. So this one's the Kedusha. Who knows what Kedusha means? Yeah, what does it mean? All right, holy, sanctification, technically sanctification. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a silent time of prayer first, and uh, then, then we'll recite that. Adonai Svatai Tiftak, Ufiyagiti Latecha. O Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise.
Nekadesh Eshem Chabelam, Kashim Shemak Dishim, Oto Bishme Marom, Kakatu Ayal Niveacha, Vecharazel Elze Veamar. Kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzvayot, Melo Koharetz, Kevodo. Tiit, Gadal, Vatiit, Kadash, Vitok, Yerushalayim, Irecha, Ledor, Vador, Ule, Netzach, Netzach, Netzachim. Veneinu tirena malchutecha Kadavar hamor b'shire uzecha Ayade David, Ayade David Ayade David, Mashiach Sid Kecha. Yimloch Adonai Leolam, Elohaich Zion, Ledor Vador, Alleluia. Let's join together on the English. We sanctify your name in the world, even as it is sanctified in the heavens above, as it is written by the hand of your prophet Isaiah. And each one of the angels calls to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. May you be exalted and sanctified within Jerusalem, your city, from generation to generation and for all eternity. May our eyes see your kingdom when Messiah Yeshua returns and reigns as king, as it is expressed in the songs of your might. By the hand of David, your righteous anointed, the Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from generation to generation, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. What does hallelujah mean? All right, okay. I just want to make sure. you. Sometimes people say, oh, we say it all the time. Don't even know what it means. All right, and please remain standing for the mourner's cottage as, as we um, stand in solidarity uh, with those who have lost loved ones. Uh, and so, uh, is there anybody here today that's mourning? Well, I know Virginia, the York site of her mom was, was on Thursday. Anybody else that's mourning the loss of a loved one today? Yes, yes. Oh, one of your neighbors, a close friend passed away. We're so sorry. Well, we'll pray God comfort their family. A anybody else that lost a, lost a loved one? that you want us to remember. Of course, the, you know, the soldiers that died in Afghanistan, we mentioned that on Thursday, and uh, you know, just those who have died of COVID, and you know, it's just, uh, we, we pray no more death. Thank God when the Lord returns, no more death. All right, well, let's, let's recite the Morse call. You can join with me if you know the tune. Yitgadav, Yitgadash, Shemay Rabbah, Veyal Mal Divarach Hute, Veyam Lich Mal Hute, Bahaye Hon of Yome, Hon of Haye de Hobeyes Rayel, Bagala, Bagala, Uvis Mahan Kariv. Vemaru, Amen. Yehesh me rabba me varach, le ala molal me almaya. Yit barach, yit barach, ve yishtabach, 
Vyet par, vyet ramam, vyet nase, vyet hadar, vyet ale, vyet halal, shmeta kudasha brichu. Leila men kol berchata, vashirata, tush bechata, vanechamata, damiran belmam. Vemaru Amen. Yaheshlama Rabba. Men Shma Yavachim Aleinu. Ve'alko Yisrael. Vemru Imru Amen. Oh say Shalom Bim Roma. Who ya say shalom aleinu, ve'al kol Yisrael, ve'imru, imru, amen. All right, together on the English. Magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his messianic kingdom through the return of Messiah Yeshua during your life and during your days, even swiftly and soon, and say, Amen. Exalted and honored be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he beyond all the blessings and hymns, praises and consolations that are uttered in the world, and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his high places make peace upon us and upon all Israel and say amen. Thank you that we can always find comfort from the God of all comfort through Messiah Yeshua, who is Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Okay, remain standing. So you're getting to stand a little bit here, all right? So we're going to do the Shema. So, all right, so let's, uh, let's recite this together. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be His name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha v'chol avavacha u'v'chol nafshecha v'chol neodecha ve'hayu ha'devorim alele asher anochi metzavcha Hayom alevavecha Veshinatam lavanecha Vedivarptam bam Veshivtacha bavetachecha Uvlechtacha vadarek Uvshokbacha uvkomecha Ukshartam leot al yadecha Vehayu letotafot ben enecha Uktavtam amazuzut batecha uvisharecha Okay, in the English. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. 
And these words which I'm commanding you today shall be on your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Messiah Yeshua said that on these two mitzvot, these two commandments, rests the whole law and the prophets, and a relationship with him is the key to keeping these two commandments. Amen. You may be seated. Now, um, Sherry, did you want to take the children now or later? What would you like to do? There, there's several here if you want to. Th okay. So they'll go, go with Sherry. Yeah, so she can, she can go if she wants or she can stay. It's up, it's up to you guys. So Lord, bless them as they go to their Shabbat class and pray they'll have a good class today and learn about you. Worship, uh, Andrew's going to come lead us. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Good to, Cyril, it's so good to see you. Man, it's been forever. That goes back to my Jews for Jesus days. It's good to see you. Uh, Cyril's got an amazing heart. I, I love that guy. So good to be worshiping with you. Feel free to stand or sit. I realize you've been standing for quite some time with liturgy, so no worries there. Um, but let's worship the Lord together. Uh, I was reminded this morning, you know, there's, there's good things and bad things with, um, with most uh, word. guys like Jonathan Edwards, some people from the Westminster Confession, um, and they, they make the point of the greatest, the chief end of man is to worship and glorify God. Amen? Let's do that together this morning. Salvation belongs to God who sits on the throne forever and ever and to the Lamb who was slain. Forever and ever, amen. Isaac and Abraham, Isaac and Abraham, all to made a hand raised in faith that God Himself would promote salvation. Salvation belongs to our God Who sits on the throne forever and ever And to the Lamb who was slain Be glory and power forever and ever, amen Slaves in a foreign land, slaves in a foreign land, a shepherd, a shepherd, a staff in hand, freedom from chains, a lamb's blood, a stain that God himself would provide. Lift your voices. Salvation belongs to our God. Who sits on the throne forever and ever And to the Lamb that was slain Be glory and power forever and ever, amen A hill in Jerusalem A hill in Jerusalem 
thieves and the son of man a debt to be paid a debt to be paid Yeshua the way that God himself would provide salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne forever and ever and to the Lamb who was slain be glory and power forever and ever redeemed of every nation come lift a banner of praise to the returning one Lamb of God victorious King every tribe every tongue together sing salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne forever and ever and to the Lamb who was slain be glory and power forever and ever Join me in standing. Let's worship the one true God. There is a shaking. There is a shaking. Let hearts awaken. Our God is moving. Forever changing us. Is he changing you? There is a trembling. There is revival. The sound of worship, so great and glorious. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, hear us now. Breathe on us. Holy fire, fall. Come and fill this place with your presence. Like a rushing wind. Send your spirit here, breath of heaven, breathe on us. Breath of heaven, breathe on us. There is a shaking. There is a shaking. Let hearts awaken. Our God is moving, forever changing us. There is a trembling. There is a trembling. There is revival. The sound of worship. So great and glorious. Holy Spirit, hear us now. And breathe on us. The holy fire fall. Come and fill this place with your presence Like a rushing wind Send your spirit here Breath of heaven, breathe on us Breath of heaven, breathe on us Come breathe on us Come up your hands and shout the Lord is with us now lift up your voice and sing and he is holy lift up your hands and shout the Lord is with us now lift up your voice and sing he is holy Fire fall, come and 
fill this place with your presence like a rushing wind send your spirit here breath of heaven breathe on us breathe on us oh and breathe on us holy fire fall come and fill this place with your presence like a rushing wind send your spirit here breath of heaven breathe on us own oh, breath of heaven breathe on us come breathe on us come breathe on us Father, we do ask that your spirit breathes on us. We're so grateful, Lord, that at the moment of our salvation, we know that your spirit took up residence within our hearts. But this morning, we pray that you would fill us. We pray that your word would saturate us so that we think your thoughts and not our own, so that we live the way that Yeshua lived. We pray that this morning we would set our hearts anew through worship and through declaring aloud together the goodness of God, the gloriousness of God, and most importantly, your beauty, your perfectness, Father. We pray this in your name. Amen. desert land He who makes the pathway in the wilderness He who makes the sun to rise and rain to fall The God of Israel The Lord of all Baruch Atah Adonai Blessed is the Lord who reigns, our God most high. Baruch Atah Adonai, blessed is the Holy One, the maker of the earth and sky. I, Baruch Adonai, he is the Holy One of Israel He who brings salvation out of Zion's hill He who makes the mountains quake and idols to fall there is no other one, no other God. Baruch Atah Adonai, blessed is the Lord who reigns, our God most high. Baruch Atah Adonai, blessed is the Holy One the maker of the earth and sky. I, Baruch Adonai. I, blessed is the Lord. Blessed is the Lord who reigns on high. Baruch Adonai. Blessed is the Lord who reigns on high, Baruch Adonai. Let's sing 
that again. It's blessed is the Lord who reigns on high. Baruch Adonai. It's blessed is the Lord who reigns on high. Baruch Adonai. Ata Adonai, blessed is the Lord who reigns, our God most high. Baruch Ata Adonai, blessed is the Holy One, the Maker of the earth and sky. I the splendor of a king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, darkness, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great, how great. Our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands. Age to age he stands. And time in his hands beginning and the end beginning and the end the Godhead the Godhead three in one and Father Spirit Son the Lion and the Lamb the Lion and the Lamb how great our God, would you sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Let's sing that in Hebrew. Gadol Elohai. Gadol Elohai. Shiru ki Gadol. And call a Hadri Kigado Elohai. He's a name above all names. He is worthy of all praise. My heart. How great is our God. Can we sing that again? Name above all names. Name above all names. He is worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Our God, would you sing with me? How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God.
is our God, Gadol Elohai, Gadol Elohai, Shiru Ki Gadol Elohai, Kol Echad Yeri, Ki Gadol Elohai. bless you this morning. May he shine his face upon you. Shalom. Can we sing that again in Hebrew? Shalom. Now in the English, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let it be. Amen. And amen. 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 And amen. Amen. In the morning, in the evening, in your going, in your coming, in your weeping, and rejoicing, He is with you, He is with you. Shalom. Well, I pray that peace reigns in your heart. If not, speak to one of us about Yeshua. He is the ultimate peace. Be well, be blessed. Shabbat Shalom. Wow, praise the Lord. Thank you for your presence, oh God. 
The announcements are Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining us today. The, the bulletin has the announcements in the very back, and I'll just let you, um, I'll just touch on some highlights on the announcements today. Thank you. I re we really, really appreciate our essential team who come here every weekend and all throughout this past two weeks to prepare our services for us. If you would like to join us uh, to serve the Lord, a part of our essential team, then will you kindly let me know about that? Um, also, while supplies last, we will have our Jewish calendars in the back for you, and you, you can take one as a gift to somebody that you may be a prospect for you to minister the love of Yeshua. Fanny Levin, can you raise your hand? He will, she will be having her Havara today outside of the sanctuary this afternoon after the service, and it's called Trials to Blessings, from Trials to Blessings. And then um, tomorrow, who? Oh, Tomorrow is a big day for us. We will, um, our, our project manager, Oren, right here, will help us to build the, 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 the sukkah tomorrow. We will be building it at 3 o'clock. That is a big change from the 4 o'clock that we said previously. We have strong men who will help us load and unload the mobile mini and bring everything to the front. But at 3 o'clock, Oren will be there with his team and all of us who are willing to help him to build our sukkah. We, we, that's a family event. It is usually one of our most fun times to build the sukkah together. So we invite you to come tomorrow. We will have a light Oneg with um, cookies, <laughs> cookies, and those who are and those who are not um, the uncookie type people, we, uh, the uncookie type people will have some fruit for you, okay? And then we'll have some water and for that as well. Next, um, so next Friday. We will have our prayer meeting as usual on our Zoom. We invite you to attend that through our Zoom meeting, and the, that link is on our Watch New next Saturday. Ooh, we will have our Sukkot service, and we will be waving the lulav, and we will also have a light oneg afterwards. And if you would be willing to help out with the light oneg, we do have a phone number for Disha Burgos, who is heading that team to prepare a light oneg for us after the service of the Sukkot next Saturday. Her phone number is on the bulletin. Please let her know if you can help out on that. And then, as usual, um, also the next, the next Saturday after next Saturday, October the second, we will have the Simcha Torah. Like Pastor said, we are almost at the very end of reading the Torah, and so we will be having our marching around with the Simcha Torah, and then we will re-roll the Torah from very beginning to end. It's just like a tour. It's just like Pastor God gives us a tour of the of the of the scriptures, and he will point out things in the Bible. And we've had that before, but really, it's quite an experience to do that. So he will point out some very important parts of the Torah scroll. October the second. Okay, so please come us for come come and help us to reroll the Torah, but have fun learning about it as well. Uh, thank you so much for your giving unto the Lord. We thank you so much for giving online. The link is on the online stream on our website, and also here on site we have Kathy in the back with the boxed offering. If you would like to give cash, we invite you to write your cash donations on a blue card so that we will know who to credit that cash. As, as well, as well. Uh, just a gentle reminder, um, um, we are allowed to have only capped water battle, bottles in the sanctuary. Sodas, colored drinks, even colored water, coffee, and other drinks are not allowed in the sanctuary. Will you help us by just having bottled capped water in the sanctuary? Thank you so much, and, and we thank you for being here today. We turn this over to Pastor Brown. Thank you, Virginia. So again, we got a lot going on. So, so, so again, we hope you'll join us tomorrow to build the sukkah three o'clock next Saturday. We'll, we'll, I'll be preaching on Sukkot and the service, and then we're going to go outside and wave the lulav outside. Maybe you've never done that before, but it's very fun. I believe the children will probably be decorating the sukkah in their Shabbat school next next week, and then. And then we didn't mention it, but a week from tomorrow, Sunday, we're going to have another Sukkot service. Now, we're still finalizing the time. I don't know if it'll be 3 or 4 o'clock, somewhere around there. I'll mention it this week. 
uh, and then we'll take down the sukkah afterwards. So that's next Sunday afternoon, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. And then the Simcha Torah. So there's a lot going on. All right, well, let me pray. Let's commit this time to the Lord. How many of you have a special prayer need today? Raise your hand and uh, I'll pray for us. So Avina Shabbat Shemayim, our Heavenly Father, just thank you for each person and just whatever they're dealing with today. I just pray you help them and bless them and uh, just pray you minister to them and work that out, those situations out for them and those they care about. And uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, this is that we're still in this uh, fall Jewish holidays. Uh, and Lord, we just pray you bless all of them. Uh, we pray it'll be peaceful. I prayed at the beginning of the service, but we still pray for the peace of Yerushalayim. We pray your peace upon the United States, Afghanistan, every country around the world for that, for that matter. Uh, and, uh, and we have some from Brazil, we have some from different countries, Ecuador. Uh, Lord, just pray for everybody uh, uh, in Colombia. So, Lord, just uh, bless this time and uh, just pray, God, that you'd heal those who need healing, provide financially for those who need financial provision, give clear direction wisdom to those who, who are really trying to make important decisions and they can't afford to be wrong. So, Lord, I pray that you make your will clear to them on that. And, uh, and it, again, just and I pray for our loved ones and friends that need the Lord. Lord, please work in their hearts and draw them to yourself. And even, Lord, bring people across our path that will have the privilege of sharing the good news of Yeshua with them because there's so many people around us that need the Lord. So, Lord, may we take advantage of those opportunities and even pray for those opportunities, look for those opportunities. We pray this in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Well, we've got a special speaker today. Actually, it's kind of coming home, right? So, so Cyril and Rhonda Gordon, they were members of Adat Yeshua many years ago, and then they moved... Uh, down in Orange County area, so they've been down there a number of years, but Cyril and Rhonda are good friends of the congregation, they're mishpacha, they're family, and uh, Cyril is with a ministry called Jewish Outreach International based out of Atlanta, and he's got a table out there, you can see some of the resources afterwards, I'm sure he'll explain more about that. One of the things I appreciate about Cyril, he's got a real passion to see our Jewish people and others come to believe in Yeshua. Amen. And also, you know, I love dogs, and he's got the only witnessing dog I know. <laughs> he has a dog out there with him at Venice Beach witnessing with him. I don't know how many people the dogs led to the Lord, but anyway, I, I, they, he's such a cute dog. I've seen him in these pictures and everything, so probably just melts their hearts, and they have, they want to receive the Lord. But anyway, Cyril, come on up and share with us. Let's welcome Cyril. All right. What a joy to be back. Really is a homecoming. My daughter, Gabriella was bat mitzvah right here. Now she's already 19. Oy vey. Andrew, where are you? Oh, he had to go. Oh, okay. Can see some other familiar faces. Praise God, great to be here. Uh, this morning, uh, I've got a real treat for you. Uh, we are gonna talk about the big picture and it's gonna be out of uh, the book of Genesis. We're gonna go right to the beginning of Genesis. Uh, I came to faith in 1993 in a Jewish family, uh, growing up, born in France, grew up in San Francisco. We were the only Jews in an Italian Catholic neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, my mom's an Egyptian Jew, my father's a French Jew, and uh, uh, through visions and dreams and dabbling in all kinds of Eastern religion, eventually becoming a modern Orthodox Jew. Uh, I came to faith in 93. I had a radical transformation. And uh, have, God gave me a real heart for, for people, for, for their souls, both Jew and Gentile. Uh, because I was kind of upset when I came to faith that no one had shared the good news with me before. 
I had friends in college who went to church. One was even an altar boy. And he saw me go through a lot in college and never pointed me to my Messiah. Uh, my rabbis never pointed me to my Messiah. I was upset about that. And uh, I've been committed ever since to point every person I can to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, because there's nothing more important. And now I've been in frontline evangelism for t over 28 years. Uh, the Lord has sent me back to places where I used to party and live like a heathen. He has sent me back to those places to redeem them. Places like New York City, San Francisco, uh, Los Angeles, uh, Paris, France, uh, Israel, and Jerusalem. I've been to all those places with the gospel. And the Lord has paraded me in these places to tell the enemy, he's mine. Because the enemy thought he had me. I was chained up. I was in serious bondage on my way to separation from God forever. But the Lord in his mercy pulled me out. If you like testimonies, I did bring a booklet that has my testimony and my wife's testimony, who was also Jewish, called Match by Messiah. Uh, you can find them in the back. But... After all those years of sharing the gospel with people, I have found a method that really works. And I'm going to share that with you today. Uh, when I meet people in the mission field, the first question I ask them is, do you know why the world's a mess? And do you know, most of the people don't know. In fact, I can't remember one person who said, yeah, I know why, and gave me an answer. Most people will say, I don't know. But they all know the world's a mess. Even the atheist. So then I say, well, let me tell you what the Bible says about this. And I take them to Genesis. And what does God say in his creation? We know that God created the heavens and the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. What does he say? And God saw the light and it was good. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called, he called the seas. And God said that it was good. And when I get to the it was good part, everyone chime in, okay? And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the trees that yield fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And I'm going to skip down to 17. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light to the earth. Verse 18. And to rule over the day, over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So God created sea creatures and every living thing that moves, that which the waters are bounded according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Folks, when God created the heavens and the earth, and he made man and woman in his image, it was very good. There was nothing wrong with us. We didn't die. We didn't get sick. We didn't do evil. But the evil one came and deceived mankind into joining the rebellion against God. And the one commandment God gave our forefathers, they broke. And the whole universe was cursed. We started dying. We started getting sick. And we started doing evil. It's called the fall of men. Adam and Eve lived in the Garden of Eden, and according to the Bible, it was apparently outlined in the yellow there, uh, just east of Israel, and uh, encompassed all of Syria, 
Iraq, Jordan. It was a big land, probably the size of at least Texas, probably bigger. And God put the tree of, that they were not supposed to eat of right in the middle of the Garden of Eden. Folks, what in the world were they doing hanging out next to this tree? They could have been anywhere besides that, that tree, right? That's a big place. But they're hanging out next to the tree they're not supposed to eat. That was the first problem. And the enemy saw this and he took advantage of it. And God said that when they, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. If you eat of this tree that you're not supposed to. The one tree out of who knows how many. But they ate it. They were deceived into thinking God was keeping something from them. They believed the evil one over almighty God. That's a serious trespass. And we were cursed. The Lord cursed the serpent, the evil one. He, and the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it. All the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. The wages of sin is death, separation from God. And now mankind started to die, started to do evil, started to get sick. Isn't it interesting? I meet a lot of atheists that are mad at God for all the sorrow and pain and suffering in the world. But that came because of us. It came because we rebelled against God. But they like to blame God. How's that? What a meanie, they say. You know, I minister in a lot of uh, reform synagogues, and most of the Jews in reform synagogues think that God is a tyrant. It's unbelievable. They really think he's a tyrant. I went to one synagogue, and the rabbi from the pulpit, after reading the passage in the Torah where the Israelites were commanded to, to take the promised land and wipe out the pagan nations before them, and you know, wipe out everyone, the, the men, the children, the, the women, everyone had to go. The rabbi from the pulpit said, God should be tried for war crimes. I kid you not. This is the spiritual state of our Jewish people. So sin became hereditary and, it, and we, we've been slaves ever since. It says in Romans chapter 5, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. But God's grace was poured out many times. We have an example of it with Noah. The whole world was evil, and God was going to wipe it out with a flood. But Noah found grace in God's sight. As it says in Genesis, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Because Noah trusted God. He didn't see God as a tyrant. Noah had faith in God. And that was counted to him as righteousness. But God did not leave us hanging. Because of his love for us, he made a way for us to be healed of this terrible sin and he chose the Jewish people that through us would be would come the Redeemer the Savior who would offer the sacrifice needed to reconcile us back to God and I remember 
a Gentile had to point me to this passage in Leviticus. I was an Orthodox Jew going to Yom Kippur every year, fasting and praying. I knew I was a sinner. That wasn't a problem. But my sins were never forgiven. What was missing in my life? And a Gentile Christian had to point me to this passage. Leviticus 17.11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Wow, I didn't know this. My rabbi never taught me this. This is what was missing. I needed a blood atonement. This Gentile Christian made me jealous for Jesus. She had a spiritual peace I didn't have, and I'm a Levite and a Cohen. This is what was missing. And Yohanan the Baptist, what did he say regarding Yeshua? He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The Messiah himself, God himself in the flesh, would come and pay the penalty for our sins, though he didn't have to. Messiah had no sin. That's the God I serve. That's the God. There is no greater love than to give your life for someone. Now, the, the, the tragedy is this, folks. Our Jewish people have been misled by our spiritual leaders. And this is not coming just from me. It's in our Torah. Read the whole chapter of Ezekiel 34. God is not happy with the shepherds of Israel. They serve, they serve themselves, but they're not serving the flock. And God says, because of this, he himself will come and be our shepherd. And many of you know who our shepherd is. Amen. Yeshua. Amen. And the tragedy is this. And I just found this out this year, folks. After many years of frontline evangelism, the Lord, I believe, has really showed me something key when you're dealing with my Jewish people regarding the gospel. And for you, some of you might find this quite shocking. But this is really the root cause that keeps, a lot, that keeps a lot of my Jewish people away from Yeshua and not willing to look into him. You see, the tragedy is this, folks, that our rabbis for a long time now have stopped teaching the fall of men. They have outright deleted it. They don't teach that we have fallen from God's grace and are now separated from him. They're teaching that everyone's born pure and we have a yetzer hara and a yetzer hatov, a good and bad inclination, and we just have to wrestle with these. That's our goal in life. And we're supposed to, God's up there with a scale and he weighs our good deeds and bad deeds and if the good deeds weigh, are, are more than the bad deeds, he lets you into heaven. This is not in my Torah, folks. On an article regarding original sin and Judaism, Alfred Kolak, in the, in the Jewish book of Why, says that, the doctrine of original sin is totally unacceptable to Jews. Jews believe that man enters the world free of sin with a soul that is pure and innocent and untainted. While there were some Jewish teachers in Talmudic times who believed that death was a punishment brought upon mankind on account of Adam's sin, the dominant view by, by far was that man sins because he is not a perfect being and not, as Christianity teaches, because he is inherently sinful. So there was a time when our sages did teach original sin. But these days, and for a long time, it's been thrown out the window. So most Jews you meet don't see themselves in need of a savior. They think they're born pure 
And God accepts them in that state. And regarding this teaching that we wrestle uh, from doing uh, you know, the good inclination and the bad inclination, the rabbis are teaching that the bad inclination is a good thing. I kid you not. I'm going to read this. This is out of the Oxford reference in regard to the Yetzir Hatov and the Yetzir Hara. It says, The evil inclination provides human life with its driving power and as such is essential to human life. As, well, as a well-known Midrash puts it, were it not for the evil inclination, no one would build a house or have children or engage in commerce. This is why, according to the Midrash, Scripture says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Good refers to the good inclination, and very good to the evil inclination. I kid you not. This is the spiritual state of our Jewish people. And it's so bad that there's Jewish mysticism in, or in many of the Judaisms out there that are even saying that Lucifer is actually a good guy and misunderstood. And I thought I was in heavy bondage before I came to faith. The Jewish leaders are teaching that those who believe in Yeshua have been pushing original sin in order to uh, scare people into accepting the gospel. They're using it as a fear tactic. That's what they're teaching. For the rabbis, the true hero is, as stated in Ethics of the Fathers, one who subdues his evil inclination, one who exercises severe self-control, refusing to yield to temptation. And the rabbis teach that you can do this, that there are people that are sinless. They are called tzaddikim. And they're practically worshipped. If you go to Israel, where do a lot of the Orthodox and Haredi go on their vacation? They go to the grave sites of these tzaddikim. And they light candles. I wonder where the Catholics got it. Because they think these rabbis that died were righteous. Now, in case you don't know, there are several groups whose raison d'etre is to keep Jews away from Jesus. There's no other people on the planet like this that have organized groups whose only reason is to keep Yeshua from them. Among the Jews, you've got Jews for Judaism, Outreach Judaism, Yad Lachim, Eish Torah. I could name a couple more. And their mission is to keep Jews away from Yeshua. And they're very clever. I'm going to give you some of their tactics today because they attack this concept of original sin. They say that the term original sin is unknown to the Jewish scriptures and that the church's teachings on this doctrine are antithetical to the core principles of the Torah and its prophets. They say the Torah loudly condemns the alien teaching that man is unable to freely choose good over evil, life over death. They say that throughout, uh, that Moses himself declared that it is man alone 
who can and must merit his own salvation. That's the foundation of Orthodox Judaism, that you can merit your salvation through mitzvot. And they run to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 10. They just love that passage that God speaks to Moses and tells him that... Um, If you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of the law, if you turn unto the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul, for this commandment which I command you this day is not too hard for you, neither is it too far off. It is not in the heaven that you should say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it to us and make us hear it, that, way, that we may do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who shall go over to the sea for us and bring it unto us and make us to hear it that way that we may do it. The word is very near to you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. You might as well take that and frame it and put it in all their houses. That's their foundation. God is saying, yes, of course you can do these commandments I'm giving to you. And guess what? Part of those commandments is offering sacrifice for your sins. That's why we had to offer unblemished lambs and goats over and over again to heal that broken relationship we had with God. They don't mention that. Huh? They don't mention the many times in scriptures that God says that all have sinned. There is not one who's righteous, Ecclesiastes 7.20. Indeed, there is not a righteous man on earth who continually does good and who never sins. Four times in the Psalms, it says there is no one who does good. In Psalm 143, it says, For in your sight no man living is righteous. Jeremiah 32.30 the word of God says, Indeed, the sons of Israel and the sons of Judah have been doing only evil in my sight from their youth. From their youth, from the beginning. I do a lot of work in the synagogues, and I'll go into that later. But this is what I try to remind them of. That we, God has not been happy with us over the years. We have rebelled over and over again. One lady in a synagogue said, she is very frustrated with me. She says, I was peeing on her leg because I'm reminding her of how we have, been, we have fallen short in the eyes of God. I was bothering her. She doesn't want to hear that. The Jews in the synagogue, they want to think they're good people. They, they give alms. They give to charity. They do good works. They give to the synagogue. They volunteered on Shabbat service. The good deeds outweigh the bad deeds. And of course, these groups that want to come against Yeshua and they want to destroy this idea of original sin they want to point us to men of God in the scriptures that were deemed righteous, such as Caleb, such as King Josiah, such as Job, and say, see, God called them righteous. They were righteous because they believed God and they followed him. Guess what? They offered sacrifices for their sins too. That's part of following God. They offered sacrifices. They always needed a sacrifice. And their favorite scripture, this one is their favorite scripture to try and take apart the, the teaching of original sin in Torah. Out of Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, 
when God is talking to um, Cain. You know, Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel, the first two children. And Cain was upset with God because he did not like his sacrifice. And what does God say to Cain in Genesis 4, verse 6? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? If though you do not do what is right, excuse me, if though you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you shall master over it. And they go, aha! God says you can master your sin. And they say, nullified. Original sin doesn't exist. Guess what, folks? Right after God said this to Cain, he murdered his brother. Doesn't sound like he mastered it to me. They don't talk about that. So they say, this is from Outreach Judaism. They say the Almighty did not give us desires that we cannot govern or, or, or com commandments that we could not keep. The Torah was not delivered to angels or animals. It was given to the children of Israel long after our first ancestors transgressed in the Garden of Eden, or at least they acknowledge the transgression. Then they say, why would God command his people to observe a Torah that he knew we could not keep, promise us that we can fulfill the mitzvot, and then punish us for not being obedient to commandments that we couldn't keep in the first place? Would any loving parent raise his child that way? They run to this. This is their modus operandus. They think God gave us this law that we could keep. But there's a purpose why God gave us this law of righteousness. He gave it to us to show us that we needed a savior, that we have done wrong in the eyes of God, and we need to repent and do tshuva. It's the spiritual pride in my fellow Jews that blinds them to think that they can follow the righteous laws without going to God and through his way receiving forgiveness is pride. And that's a big stumbling stone for my Jewish people. Spiritual pride. So folks, this methodology has really worked for me over the years to point them to Genesis, give them the big picture, why did sin enter the world? Why is the world a mess? But that God has made a way for us and the world to be healed through the sacrifice of his only begotten son. And for most people I share this with, they get it. It makes sense. And I even have to share this with my Jewish people because they don't know this. Amen? All right. There we go. Good. Well, let's segue over to a praise report. Uh, I'm a frontline evangelist in the enemy's camp, Venice Beach, California. The Lord likes to put me where the action is. In case you didn't know, Venice Beach is one of the most visited places in California and even in the whole U.S., just behind Disneyland. Thousands of people go there from all over the world, including a lot of Israelis. It's a place I used to go before I came to faith to flaunt the flesh. It's where people go to show off their tattoos, their pierces, their muscles, and parts I can't talk about. In case you haven't been to Venice, it's this long walkway just south of Santa Monica, about a mile and a half, and just people come and stroll up and down. They're not in a rush to get anywhere. It's not like going to Third Street Promenade or a mall or, or a ball game where people are in a rush and they're distracted. Here they're just strolling up and down this walkway all day long, all year long. And when I was 
living at Venice for three months. I was an artist. I had an art show down there in the early 90s. And I was searching. I was an Orthodox Jew, but I was looking into everything, even New Age and going to psychics and stuff. I would walk up and down this walkway every afternoon, never ran into a follower of Yeshua. But the psychics were there. So I went to the psychics and got misled. It's the end of the road for a lot of people, a lot of homeless, a lot of hurting people out there, people with addictions, all kinds of issues. A lot of people come to L.A. looking to make it, and they crash and burn. A lot of homeless out there. Uh, it's, like I said, the end of the road for a lot of people. And the enemies out there every day, you got the tarot card readers, you got the marijuana shops. Now, folks, I'm just going to be zipping through this, okay? There's a story behind every picture. Uh, you can get that story if you sign up for my praise report. I'll leave this in the back table. You can get them via email or mail. This will put you in the action. You are put in the trenches with these praise reports. Uh, they're short and sweet, without any fluff, and you're going to get the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's just the way I do things. Uh, the Hindus are out there every day, every day, folks. You got the psychics out there every day. So the Lord put it on my heart when I came to L.A. in 2000 with my wife that, that we needed a regular presence out there. Not just go once a year, have a powwow and leave. A regular presence. So since 2000, I've been going out there every week, practically, with teams. Now, if I were to look at into the spirit realm and wonder how God sees me, I like this painting. The Lord. What I love about this painting is look at the guy's back foot. He is planting that puppy in there. He's ready for battle. This giant demon's coming at him. He is not running, folks. He's standing his ground. He's got his helmet of salvation, his shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit. And that demon is about to have a bad day. <laughs> this is the kind of spirit you got to have to go to Venice. Okay, it's not a playground. Uh, I have people that come out with me, and they never come back. Uh, but I do have a faithful team of uh, volunteers that has been faithful, and they have. And the thing about going to battle for the Lord is, the more you go into battle, the thicker your armor gets. Amen. And this is, this is what we set up at Venice. We have a free Bibles table. We'll show the Jerusalem flag, the Israeli flag. We have English, Spanish, and Hebrew New Testaments free. And people come to our table all day long. We counted just two weeks ago at Venice, 2,200 people strolled by our table every hour. Where do you get that kind of exposure? I can't th think of any. We're out there five or six hours. That's over 10,000, 12,000 people are going to stroll by this table. Jew and Gentile serving the Lord together. We have our Jesus Loves You t-shirts with the Star of David. That draws a lot of people over. They want to know what's the connection. Well, last I checked, Jesus was a descendant of King David, right? Uh, we always take our shofars and we blow the trumpet and pray before we go to battle. In fact, we're going to do that now. Brother, you want, to, you want to blow with me? Let's go to battle here. Out of my favorite scripture. Yeah. Come on up. We're going to read Numbers chapter 10, verse 9, and then blow the trumpet in obedience to the Lord. As the Lord commanded Moses, when you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the shofars, and you will be remembered before the Lord, your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. That's what we do before we go to battle, folks. Every day we go out, we trust the Lord to fight our battles. Because the enemy comes, and he tries to destroy what we're doing. 
This is uh, Brother Art Perlis. He's another Jew who loves Jesus. Yes. Awesome brother. In fact, we're all going out tomorrow to Venice. He's, he's joining us. He's a veteran warrior for the Lord. Uh, and I'm going to flip through this quick, okay, okay folks? Because uh, there's a lot. There. That's Moodles. He's my faithful mascot. I got him at Venice, actually. That's a whole story. Yeah, I've had him for eight years. And if I ever go to Venice without him, he is very upset. <laughs> Here's a, a fellow named Catman. He's a local homeless who came by and got the gospel and gave his life to Yeshua. Here's a, a visitor who came by and, again, got the gospel, gave his life to Yeshua, left with a New Testament. Uh, here's another local fellow named Quint Quinton. Same thing, got the gospel. All my team is trained to give the gospel in a way people can understand. Because, folks, let me be honest with you. I don't know if I've ever met anyone who was brought to Yeshua because they lost a debate. Theology is not going to do it. Showing how smart you are is not going to do it. It's the power of the Holy Spirit from sharing the gospel. I'm not a, I'm, I don't have any master's degree. I didn't go to Bible school. All I got is the gospel. It's very simple. My five-year-old kid accepted it. Here's a wonderful uh, Jewish grandma who loves Yeshua. She came by for prayer, for healing. Her name is Brucha. Uh, here's a uh, local who uh, was raised a Catholic, and he came to faith. A lot of Catholics come to faith at our table because they already have a, a foundation. But they've never personally accepted Yeshua into their life. This fellow in the black shirt's named Sasha. He is, he's always at Venice. He used to just walk by our table. Now he comes, he likes to hang out with us. Very dry sense of humor. But every time he's at our table, he gets the gospel. And we don't, we, we give him everything. But he stays. I keep thinking we're giving him too much, but he keeps coming back. Pray for him, because uh, he's a hard nut. Uh, this is lately, this is two weeks ago, we were at Venice, and we were just getting mobbed by Israelis. It was just nonstop, these group of Israelis were coming by, and we all took them and shared the gospel with them. Here I am uh, sharing the prophecies with the guy in the orange shorts. Things they've never read before. A lot of them took uh, Hebrew literature and, and uh, took off. But we're sowing seed into their lives. Here's some more. A whole group of Israelis came by to get the gospel. You know, most Israelis speak English. It's not a problem. Here, an, it's an Orthodox Jew came by. We had this big animated discussion uh, in fact, it got so animated, a whole crowd of people gathered around. Uh, so we were able to sow into his life. Uh, this fellow in the middle, his name's Daniel Sternberger, and he came from an Orthodox Jewish family. He got into, he left it, and he went into New Age, and then he started looking into Yeshua. He met us at the beach, and I started meeting him privately, and he eventually came to faith. This is with Messianic Rabbi Doug Friedman from Ben David, uh, we all met with Daniel, and he prayed to receive the Lord. But I told you folks, I will give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the unfortunate tr reality of this is right after he prayed to receive the Lord, the enemy came in there and attacked him with a deep depression. Uh, I think he has a history of bipolar. So right now, we're, we're working to try to help him get out of this funk because it's deep. So pray for Daniel. Uh, this fellow's name's Bud Siegel. He's also a Jew who's come to faith, and I've been discipling him. And this is a project, folks. I thought I was ADD. This guy's like ADD times 10. But I'm, I'm doing it. It's happening. Uh, here's another local came to faith, took a, a New Testament. Uh, here's a new ager getting the gospel. He was very open. Got to share with him for almost half an hour. And uh, so that's... That's the short window into my world. This is only a glimpse into what's happened in the last two years. Um, I worked for a big ministry to the Jews for 19 years here in LA, did a lot of great work with them. Uh, but at my apex with them, 
the Lord moved me to a small ministry. I went from a ministry that had a, a steady salary, a 401k, a health insurance, all the perks, to a ministry that has none of that. And I just have to live by faith and trust in Yeshua. And folks, it's been unbelievable. When I took the step of faith, the Lord grabbed my hand and I had not looked back. It's like he gave me wings and the sky's the limit. I'm doing double the evangelism I was doing with the big ministry. And the effectiveness has gone way up too. So I'm taking everything I've learned the last 28 years and applying it now in my life like never before. So I'm going to be sharing with all of you something for insiders only after this. Uh, because it's a little bit on the top secret side. But it's another thing the Lord's having me do. So we're going to take a little pause now uh, because the live streams are going to come down, right? Um, okay, so go ahead. So he's not totally through yet, we, and it's not going to be long, maybe about five minutes afterwards. But uh, let me just say we are supporting uh, Cyril financially as a congregation, so a, a portion of what you give to Dr. Yeshua goes to support him. But also, if you feel led personally to support him, feel free to talk with him about that, you know. And he has him and Rhonda, they've, they've taken a step of faith, but God's faithful, and I know he's going to continue to provide. Uh, so... Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to um, do the ironic benediction, uh, and we're going to end our live stream. Then, then we'll stay. So don't leave. You normally would leave right after that, but don't leave. So if you'll please stand, and let's receive the Lord's blessing uh, as we go. Now, hold on one second. Let me get this microphone. Yivarecha donai va yishmarecha. Ya era donai panavalecha vichunecha. Yisa adonai panavalecha. Via sem lacha. Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom or peace. Shabbat shalom, good Shabbos. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom, Shabbat, 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 Shabbat shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shabbat, Shabbat Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shabbat, Shabbat Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom.